Hello, welcome to The Market Carver. I'm Adam Harder, Chief Investment Officer, Financial Enhancement Group, and Happy New Year. Uh, thank you, as always, for giving us a few minutes of your time. Uh, we are back, as promised, with a live Market Carver this week and ready to take a look at some of the key points for 2021 and things that are on our radar, radar right here now as we transition into the new year. Uh, so those items we're going to look at, we're going to look at the historical annual bond return cadence and where 2021 fell because it was historical. And then we're going to take a look at precedents when we have the years like we did last year. Uh, dive just one more point into the, the bonds and the yield curve because it signals one of the great things that we're looking at, or at least one of the most important things that we're watching heading into 2022. And then the European energy crisis and then cyclical versus defensive stocks and which ones are at top for right now. So as we look at all the bond years going back into the mid-90s, this is somewhat of a messy chart. We have shared it before. We certainly did uh, near the first quarter when we were off to a bad start. But all the gray lines represent individual years uh, going back. And you can look at 1995 there at the top is the best performing in terms of the uh, global aggregate bond index. 2021, uh, this graph was actually put together just a few days before the end of the year, but you can see we're right on pace to be the absolute uh, bottom in terms of bond returns. So uh, while most stock index indices around the globe did pretty well, uh, bonds were historically bad. Uh, however, there is a little bit of irony in this in that you look at how bad this environment was, and you're talking about a minus 5% plus or minus hit uh, for bonds. So the ironic piece there is just how important bonds are to capital preservation in that their absolute worst year, you were still left with about 95% of your capital. So uh, will this be a repeat year? Uh, time will tell. History says that bad bond years are followed by positive ones. You'd have to go all the way back into the 1970s to find repeat negative bond years. It is absolutely possible that we see that environment, especially here in the United States with the Federal Reserve that is uh, beginning uh, the process of a tightening cycle and that, and that could have a long ways to go. That certainly sets up the possibility that we see this. However, it would be unique because if we go all the way back to the mid-90s, every time we've had a bond year, uh, the bond market has responded back. And that is really a testament to just how powerful this 30-year bond bull market has been. So again, will the, we see that this year? Time will tell. Uh, as we dig in, though, we want to look to a little bit more nuance into the bond market for how we see about the overall environment playing out. And this chart right here has our attention more than any other. And it's the difference in rates between a 10-year bond and a two-year note. All right, it's what we call measuring the yield curve. Uh, when it is steepening, when it is going up, uh, that is usually a healthy signal. That is telling us that the interest rate on longer-term bonds are going up by more than they are on the shorter end. And that is usually signaling that the economy is expected to get stronger down the road. It's good for banks and it's good for most industries uh, across uh, the economy. However, you can see that after peaking towards the earlier part of last year, we have been coming down and coming down very hard. Uh, you may have heard the term uh, an inverted yield curve. We actually saw one of those in the last one of these back in 2019. Those historically have been uh, what forecast a recession. And that's certainly something I've hammered several times in the past, and we'll save that for a future one uh, about why that is such a strong signal. But we are heading back towards there. Again, a long ways to go. The reason this is uh, really expected to be challenged at a possible inversion later this year, maybe next, is just how aggressive the Fed may have to be to reverse monetary policy. Uh, so in no way, shape, or form does that scream, hey, get out of the way, pump on the brakes now, uh, because the recession may be three, four, five years down the road. It uh, depends on when that inversion happens, and the markets can even continue on a little bit longer. However, the shape and the direction of this chart says a lot about which industries will do well and which ones won't, and that's why it has so much of, of our attention. Moving across the pond, uh, Europe, as we exited 2021, was really undergoing uh, an energy crisis over the last several weeks, uh, and really even a little bit longer than that, uh, of an energy crisis. A lot of that stems from uh, Russia shutting off natural gas flow, uh, but you also had the unusual 
uh, stoppage of the wind that we, we shared with you, uh, I believe, in later November at one point in time. So those factors have combined for very expensive electric rates uh, in Europe and, and natural gas that is many, many times over the cost here of the United States. So uh, we do have several tanks uh, heading that way to supply natural gas, uh, but if we have an extra cold winter here or there, we may even see some further supply crunches. Uh, what it also means is that you see the European Commission taking action. You might very well see them uh, making changes to a lot of their nuclear agreements and using more nuclear energy going forward and classifying it and using it uh, in accordance with their green ambitions. Uh, the importance there, the main implications that we're looking at in the portfolios and in some uh, ways have access to and, and portfolio exposure now is in uranium. Uranium has had a very good start to 2022 at the prospects. Uh, the Europe makes this critical juncture, which uh, is really the absolute thing. Of course, we have COVID uh, with so much attention all around the world. Uh, number two to that in Europe would be their energy prices. Uh, so which stocks, cyclical or defensive? So cyclical stocks, you can see the list of them there. Autos, consumer discretionary, financials, energy. These are things uh, that really want the economy to be strong and a market uh, that is moving up powerfully. And defensive are things that really don't need a strong economy, uh, things like utilities, staples. Uh, and oftentimes we want to see cyclicals doing better to kind of confirm a market uptrend. That doesn't have to be the case, uh, but usually we like to see those going hand in hand. Uh, and several weeks back, we showed you this where defensive stocks were breaking out, and that is still the case uh, today. In fact, we, we look at sector rotation each and every month as part of our portfolio rotation strategies, uh, and that is something that we're observing well. Many of these uh, defensive sectors improving uh, in what we call the relative strength and, and gaining more attention in our portfolios. Uh, the caveat here, a lot of those are rate sensitive, uh, and we're, we've seen bonds again start off to a, a rough start in 2022, uh, which means that interest rates have risen and, and put these uh, a little bit of pause in that rally. So as for now, we see defensive stocks uh, in charge of the cyclic ones. Uh, and if that continues, that would induce us to do more portfolio rotation in favor of those defensive, something that wasn't the case for much of 2021. Hey, thanks for giving us so much of your time. Don't forget, uh, you certainly can give us a call to schedule your appointment, scan the QR code, or give us a call at 800-928-4001. Uh, and don't forget, you have our radio show that you can listen to over the airwaves or whatever way is most convenient for you to get your podcast. Thanks again, and have a great weekend.